I want to talk to you about tea tests now. This is a really old reference. I don't know if you ever heard of Mr. T. He was uh, popular when I was a little kid. It's probably a too old reference for you, but his name is Mr. T. Oh, that was cute. Peter the Fool <laughs> rejects my hypothesis. It's maybe just a joke for me. I don't think you uh, will have ever heard of this dude. But anyway, so we're just to revise here. So when we were doing our chi-squared independence testing, remember we had H0, which is our null hypothesis. We always said blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah are independent. When we had our chi-squared goodness of fit test, we said like, uh, whoops, not this, we would say H0. You know, the null hypothesis would be that the data follows a uniform distribution or it follows a manufacturer's specifications or something like that. And remember that how we would actually do it, we'd put it into our calculator in some ways and get a p-value in chi-squared. And then we would reject H0 if p was less than a significance level or if it's greater than a, if chi-squared is greater than a critical value, depending on what you were given. So that's just a review, just to make sure you remember that stuff, because the next thing we're going to do is kind of related to this too. So this is called a t-test. Here, uh, this is maybe the the one I know, like biologists, for example, they use this the most. So people I know in biology, at least, they use t-tests a lot. So this is like if you have some data set one and you have a data set two here. So you have a bunch of data for some reason. You just have a bunch of data. You just have a bunch of lists of things. It could be, you know, I don't know. Uh, efficacy of drugs it could be you know i don't know test scores it could be whatever it is you're trying to look at but this one right here you could calculate the mean of one you can calculate the mean of the other one see mean remember mean is called mu so we're trying to see all right so let's say this one here has an average so the mean uh, let's call it mu one whoops this one here would be called mu two sorry there we go. so mu one or mu two so the idea is we're going to try to see are these two means the same Keep in mind these things like before called critical values. So we're going to be given that or look it up in a table. Significance levels, uh, it'll be 1% or 5% or 10%. Remember what that means? Significance levels will be 0 0.1. This will be 0 0.05. This will be 0 0.1. Zero, technically. All right. The only different thing about a t-test is there's two different kinds. There's a two-tailed t-test. That's a lot of t-sounds in. And there's a one-tailed t-test. So let's see what we're checking here. So in the two-tailed t-test, we're checking the null hypothesis. H0 is just that the means are the same. In other words, mu1 equals mu2. Now this one, in the one-tailed test, we're also checking that. Okay, so we're going to say also mu1 equals mu2. However, well, this one right here, the alternate hypothesis, H1 here, will just be mu1 is not equal to mu2. Do you see that's this? This one's only checking. They're either the same or they are not the same. And actually, this is, it turns out this is going to be really important. For this t-test, this is the difference. This is how you know to do two-tailed or not. Do you notice then? This is the H0 versus H1. This one, however, we're going to actually try to check something a little bit deeper. We're going to check if mu1 is greater than mu2 or if mu1 is less than mu2. Do you see this? There's a difference. One is just saying they're either the same or they're not the same, but we don't care which way they go. This one says either they're the same or if they're not the same, we're going to be checking one of two things. Either we're going to say, well, if they're not the same, that means this one must be bigger than that one. That must be one thing. So either mu1 is bigger than mu2 or we could do H2, whoops, not H2, sorry, it's still H1. That mu1 is less than mu2. So see, there there is a slight difference. The difference is, one, we just say they're either the same or they're not, or we don't really care which way it goes. The other one says, oh no, they're either the same, or if they're not, please check, is the first one bigger than the second one, or is the first one smaller than the second one? That's the important part about t-tests. There's two different things we're checking. That's about all we need to know. The rest of it, well, there's a pro tips, I guess, on it. Like uh, These are called unpaired, so the population variance is unknown. We're going to do the t-test. Uh, it works on normal distributions. The groups don't even need to be the same size. I'm going to give you an example here where they're going to be different size groups. It's going to be like scores, and the other one has even more scores. It won't even matter. Sizes don't even have to be the same. But here's the key part. We're going to be using what's called pooled data and two sampled data. This is really important. It's called pooled. We're going to be using these in the IB. So 
let's go and see what to do here. I like this one. P is greater than 0 0.05. Game over. Try again. No. That's because, remember, with your uh, hypothesis testing, if P is less than some number, this is a 5% significance level we're checking here. So let's see how to actually do this. So how do we do this on our calculator? Well, first, we decide if we want two-tailed. Remember, that's when H0, the null hypothesis, is that... Remember, just to remind you, I'm going to do this a few times just to remind you. The two are equal. Whereas one-tailed, well, the two are equal. This isn't where it's different. The difference is right here. Here, we just say, ah, they're just not equal. We don't care. However, this one we say, this one is bigger than this, or this one is smaller than this. Just, there's a difference. Whoops. A two here and a one here. So this is going to be the key here. We have to decide which one we want. Okay, so if it's two-tailed, then we do this. If it's one-tailed, we do this. Okay. Now we have to put it into the calculator as a list. So again, we have to just, you know, put all that stuff into a list, whatever those lists are, the first thing and the second thing. We have to put them into lists. And so this is how we do it. Again, list and spreadsheets, name your columns on the Inspire. On the 84, just go stat, edit, and just put it into L1 and L2. Let's do the t-test then. Well, again, just go to stats, like a menu stats, and say two sample t-test. If you're a TID4, go stat, test, two sample t-test, like that. Here are some important things, though, because it's going to ask you about what kind of input do you want. We're going to say data. It's going to ask you for L1, that's list 1. You just do that one. List 2 is that one. Make your frequencies 1. But this is the important part, because I think both the calculators make the pool to know this is the important part here. And then it's going to ask you, well, your way of deciding it is because it's going to ask you what's your alternate hypothesis. So just keep in mind, remember we just talked about, I mean, uh, I mean, yes, we know that, uh, you know, we're checking if mu1 equals mu2. Do you notice I'm being really repetitive here? You might be getting tired of me writing it down. That's because it's important. I want you to see this. But here's the important part. Here, however, it's going to ask you what's the alternate hypothesis. And one of them might be this one doesn't equal this. Well, that means you were doing the two-sample t-test. If you get it, what I mean here? So two-tailed t-test. So this one right here, they're going to essentially, they're going to be asking you something about, hey, which kind of test do you want? Now, they don't call it two-tailed. They're just going to say, what's your alternate hypothesis? So if you want a two-tailed test, you're just doing this one. However, if you want a one-tailed t-test, then you need to specify, the way you, you tell it to do one-tailed is you say, ah, give me that if the alternate hypothesis is that this is less than this, or if this is greater than this. You, you get to choose which one you want. So basically, this is the way you're going to be choosing what to do here. Okay, so this is the important part here. So this gets a little bit more complicated. That's why I did it last, because I thought it's a little bit weird. And now we reject or not. So it's not a chi-squared test, so maybe not as important to do that. But we'll say this. Um, we'll reject h0 if, and we'll just do the usual, if p is less than the significance level. I think this is the one that makes more sense at least to do. Okay, so we're going to do that. So if p is less than a significance level, then we're going to reject uh, h0. Keep in mind, though, what you were testing. Your alternate is that if we, if we do reject it, well, then this one means that they're not the same. If we reject a one-tailed where we said this, that means this is the case. Because see the if we're rejecting H0, if we say this isn't the case, that means then this is the case and this is less than. Or if you specify this one, then it'll tell you that. So it's kind of cool. You can basically have it tell you which ones are bigger than the other statistically significantly. All right, let's go ahead and do an example. So we have students, and they're in two different math classes. So maybe you're like the one teacher, and you have two different groups. That often happened to me. I would teach you know, one math group, and maybe in the afternoons I had another different math group. So same class. You know, like same subject, but different groups of kids. So I gave them the same test, let's just say. So the teacher wants to know, is there any difference between the achievement levels? So I just want to know, is there a difference? So she performs a uh, two-tailed t-test at the 5% significance level. Remember what a two-tailed test means? Again, that means we're going to say that, well, never mind, actually, here it is right here. The question is asking, what's the null hypothesis? Two-tailed means null hypothesis, these two are equal. But importantly, the alternate hypothesis is that they're just not equal. So all I'm just checking is, are they equal or are they not equal? 
I mean the averages, of course. So this is really what I'm checking. All right, then this is really simple. I just go ahead and do this on my calculator. So I get on my trusted calculator here. Whoops, I gotta get a new list. Here we go. And I'll do a new list here, and I'll call it, I don't know, class one, I'll call it. And maybe I'll call it class two. That way at least I know which classes they are. So this is just a long list of numbers, so I hope I don't make a mistake in putting them down. Three, five, six, four, three, two, seven, six, seven, six, four, five, six. Okay, I'll check the dimensions when I'm done in a second here. Next one is, I'll just move it down ever so slightly here. This is the only long part of just to put in the data here. Six, four, five, seven, four, four. Two, one, six. Now this one should have one, two, three, four. It should have five more than the other one. Let's see, does it? One, two, three, four, five. Yay. So that's probably right. All right, so I've put them into my calculator. Now what? Well, now I go ahead and do this two-tailed t-test. So I'm going to go to stats, stat test, and let's see, can I find it? Two sample z, nope, I want a t-test, see that? Now it says input method data, yes. Where is my list one? I'm gonna tell it it's a uh, class one. Where's my list two? I use the right arrow and I say, make it class two. Frequencies are all the same. Watch very carefully. Here is where I would be choosing. This is a two-tailed t-test because my alternate hypothesis says they're not equal. If I wanted, however, a one-tailed t-test, I could specify, check if this is the case or check if that's the case. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it like this. But watch out, it's gonna be yes pooled. That's the important one here. So I go ahead and say go, and it gives me a p-value, doesn't it? P-value is 0 0.34, and it's not some weird exponent, so it's 0.3429, what should I say, so 0.342955, let's say, so 0.342955, p is approximately 0. Point, man, I forgot again, see, I'm really bad at memorizing numbers, 342955. 342955, something like this. What can you conclude? Well, remember what we talked about here before. We would reject H0 if p-value is less than the significance level. Well, what is, the, what is going on here? Let's see. What's my p-value? It's 0 0.342955. Is that less than the significance level of 0 0.05? The question mark. Is that the case? Well, no, it's not. This is bigger than that. So do you see? No. What does that mean then? We do not reject. I could say this. We could, I could say we do not reject uh, H0. So I do not reject H0. What does that mean? Well, I could say then that that's kind of like saying these two things are here are the same, right? We're going to accept it by not rejecting it. Um, but I could really say the two averages, I mean, I could say the averages are not uh, different, I guess I could say. Yeah. Or I could say the averages are the same or something like that. At least I can say statistically speaking, at least, I could say there's no, there's no great difference so there's no difference in the averages. I mean, it depends on how you want to say it, right? In the mean scores. There's lots of ways you could say this. You could be more specific. You could be a little bit more precise in your language. But this is sort of the idea, right? You could say something like this, or you could say something like this. But this is the idea behind it is we've now stated, all right, so they roughly have the same average. Statistically speaking, they're good enough.